You have to wake up and then you find your way to people like me. But I feel like the beauty of, um, you know, <laughs> people who are famous and looked up to around the world really talking about spiritual stuff. Or the beauty of there being like a spiritual superstar, so to speak. Is that perhaps people who never had access to this kind of information will actually see it and have access to the tool. And I, I'm actually feeling that tipping point because I'm, I'm in a position now in this line of work where not only me gaining so much fame around the world, but also having so many people who consult me that are super famous. Because I don't care what it's going to take, I'm reaching the top of that fucking mountain, and whoever's with me is with me, and if not, that's fine. I'm prepared for that. But it just so happens that I know that a lot of people are with me. They're just waiting for someone to lead. Before I even started, I knew what I would be doing on a world stage before I got into the limelight as a spiritual guide. I knew that this was not about me standing up in front of audiences talking about happiness. I'll be doing that for the rest of my life, but I knew that that was not what I'm here to do. I'm a revolutionary. What I'm here to do is to institute change on this planet. And so before I even wrote my first book, I had a come to Jesus moment where I was like, you know what? I, I've been, you know, I spent my life time running away from people. That's what I did, you know, because I escaped from a group which is still after me today. So I sort of decided that the benefit of actually running for your life, like I had to, is realizing that, you know, the worst that you have to risk is death and suffering before you get there, and I've already been through it. Oh my god, guess what? I was tortured for 13 years. I've already been through it. So, even if I was put in a prison of war camp, even if I was, like, you know, tortured, I've already done it. I'm not even aware of what it is that I'm doing and they're aware of it so for example this is a common th theme I don't answer an email I get thousands of emails a day I won't answer it I will never see it but the person on the other end what are they going to tell themselves they don't understand what it's like to be a celebrity they have no idea so basically they're on the other side of it they don't get an email from me and they go they go oh my god what is it about me that makes it so that I'm not worthy of notice that triggers shame. If they don't want to look at that, if they can't go near that, they're going to be like, you know what, fuck Teal. She's a fucking bitch. In fact, she's only here for money. No, they're going to go at it from that angle. And the thing is, is that they want, you know, that aspect of self is trying to protect its own self-image and get away from that feeling of shame is going to find any kind of proof to validate it. So where do you go now if you, if you want that kind of proof? You go to my haters of which there are thousands and groups now for it. So you just settle in there and you just get fed full of all this information about how terrible I am. And so you feel good. I didn't understand my haters till today, nor did I understand why I'm a perfect match to this. And it's not about attracting, it's literally just mere. This is where I feel my greatest sense of purpose. Some women are literally lit up. I mean, like, totally from the bottom up by taking care of another human being, especially children. I am not one of those women. I am happier than a clam when I'm on stage talking. So this may be really crass, what I'm about to say, but... I'm the kind of girl who men love to fuck. Like they want to own it, they want to dominate it.